Jacobs. Joining me in the business lounge today is Neil Fisher of Airco. It's good to see you and thanks for coming in. Good to see you. Tell well. me about Airco and how it all started for you. I started the business in 1991 um, as a sole trader, borrowed £2,000 and uh, my wife's visa card. <laughs> Simple as that. Simple as that. But yeah. why do it in the first place? Many would have said, you know, 1991, all right, the country wasn't going through the best of times economically, yeah. and you wanted to start on your own? I think I, uh, I always had a dream of setting the business up, and I think if, you, if you've got that in you, you'll always, if the drive's strong enough, you'll do it. Tell me about Airco itself and what it does. I mean, many people, I'm sure, would know air conditioning and, that and refrigeration units. Is that basically what you do? Yeah, the business started just doing refrigeration and air conditioning it's expanded into electrical and plumbing and heating over the over the 20 years we've been trading and is this your background is this what you were doing beforehand i'm a refrigeration engineer yeah, by trade it was a big <coughs> step i guess leaving presumably what was a fairly secure job and deciding in the 90s i want to go on my own i want to start out if i'd have listened to my father i'd have never done it because uh, i remember speaking to him in uh, in the ship pub in sutton telling him i was chucking a good job and well, what he classed as a good job, it was a good job as well. Uh, company car and decent salary, and he said, you're a, you're a fool, but uh, on reflection. What was worrying him? I think he thought it was uh, the risk factor. My father was always very risk averse, and um, you know he thought it was a, a bad move, but I think he thought of it of his, of his own, the, the way he'd been brought up and been employed by people. Mm. But it was something that I think I've got it off my grandfather. My grandfather was self-employed and I think I've, I've jumped a generation. Did you have anybody at your back, if you like, mentoring you? Because I know we're making an I've had a few people a try to stab me in it. <laughs> 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 I was thinking more of pushing you in the right direction. We'll get um, on to the stabbing a bit later, maybe. <laughs> Uh, no, no. I wished I had over the years. Uh, uh, some kind of mentor would have been great over the years. Yeah, it's... It, it would have been nice to be able to turn to somebody on many, many occasions and, and, and ask for advice, but no, so I've, not, I've not had that privilege. What about being taken seriously by suppliers, I guess, because you've got to very quickly form relationships as a self-employed, you know, as a, as a new business, you've got to form relationships with suppliers as well as go and get clients. Yeah, there was one particular guy, uh, Richard Stewart, who helped me out a lot in the early days uh, with the first job I did for a Dewest children's wear on Sutton Fields, and uh, I still use him today because I'm... I'm quite, if somebody's helped you out, uh, yeah, I believe in helping them out, yeah, and I, I still deal with him now. Is that the crux of good business, actually? <clears throat> I think there's a lot of good business done that way, yeah, definitely. Reciprocal business is a, is a great thing. I'm mm. a big believer in it, yeah. What's your biggest worry nowadays, as far as the business <clears throat> is concerned? Uh, I think in the present climate, it's getting paid. I think that's one of the biggest uh, worries with anybody at the moment. And has that been a problem? Not for me, but we've uh, we've... We've managed to push the business in such a direction that we work for a lot of blue chip companies now. But if I'd have gone back 10 years ago, um, I'd have been a lot more worried than I am now. Mm. But it's still a big worry. It's a big worry to a lot of businesses. Because you never quite know who's going to go next, do you? And does it worry you about the fact that this is a, a tough market at the moment? There are other companies doing similar jobs to you, despite the fact that you've got blue chip clients. you worried about keeping them? Um, you're always worried, Blair, about keeping them, aren't you? Um, there's a lot of companies that have been very installation orientated in our business and I think and quite a number of them sadly have gone to the wall over the last uh, year or so. Um, we had a 50-50 split with installations and service work and it's the service work that's picked right up in the last 12 months. Mm. Installations are down a little bit but service work's really picked up. Mm. 1996 was an exceptionally bad year. Yeah, We got a probably somewhere in the region of £100,000 of the bad debts that year, which was a really, really tough year mm. and took a couple of years to recover from that. So, yeah, I mean, in the 20 years you see a lot, don't you? Um, but, I mean, how did you get through it? Because there'll be people watching, maybe, one or two of whom might be thinking, oh, things aren't great at the moment. How do you get through I think keeping it's, going <coughs> as well as worrying? I think it's just drive. You just, you're only beaten if you don't get up again, aren't you? And I think that's... That's a big part of being self-employed. You know, a lot of people fail because they won't, they won't get up again and mm. have another go. And sometimes it's hard. It's very, very hard. Uh, I always say when it's good, it's good. But when it's bad, it's, it's dire. Mm. I think you measure success by benchmarks. Yeah. As, you go, as you go through the 20 years, when I'd reached the first five years, I thought, God, I'm, I'm 
getting quite successful now. Mm. And then you set yourself another goal. Mm. And then at 10 years, you think, God, yeah, that, that's... If I look back to the five years ago, I'm even more successful now. And then you keep setting yourself more and more benchmarks, I think. That's, that's what tends to happen. But, but did, you, did you set it up for success? Did you no, set it up no, because you so. wanted something to do? Did you set it up because you like fridges? Why did you set it up? I like the job, yeah. I've always liked what we do. Um, I liked... I like the fact that somebody comes to you with a problem and you solve the problem. I like, I like that side of it and, and I still do now. Um, but when I first set up, I, un I only actually ever wanted to be just on my own, controlling my own destiny. I never actually wanted to employ people. Oh, yeah. If someone said to you, yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll buy Airco, yeah. but and yeah, and you, work for you. you still run it, but you now work for me. Could you do that? I could work for you, yeah, quite easily. I couldn't afford you. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think I could quite easily work for somebody. Yeah, I don't think I, I, I've often thought about that. Uh, I'd like to still have my own business in the background, but you know, I've, I've been offered a couple of positions as non-exec directors, and that going forward that interests me a lot. Mm. Being involved with other businesses that you know you can assist or you know help along the way. Is that because uh, I know you, you you mentor a couple of people already, don't you? I mm. mean, is is that what you'd like to do is to give your advice to others? Give yeah, your I think support. if you can pass it on and not not make the same mistakes as as I've made along the way, God, how, how valuable is that? Mm. Um, yeah, just very very simple things like looking into into businesses before you do work with them. Don't don't be obsessed by getting the order. You know, a lot of people are so driven, and I still see it now in our business, it, it, a lot of people are so driven on actually getting the order, they don't look at the client and who they're working for and, you know, how how that's going to impact the business if you don't get paid or if the job doesn't run as it should. I, take a look at other the, other the type of customer we want to work for. That's what I think people need to look at before they commit themselves. At the moment, I've got a fantastic work-life balance. Which is which is great. I've made that mistake to me error in the past, and I've just been so focused on work that um, I forgot about the other parts of my life, and that can be very detrimental. But is it easy after being so focused on work? Is it easy to switch between work and home? Um, no, it's for me anyway. It's a constant tar It's a constant pull one way and a constant pull the other way. So I've always got to be very very aware of that, mm. and I'm drifting now back down the work route because I'm so fired up this year about what we're going to do. We've got a sales director and, you know, the business is taking another leap. I'm really fired up about it. And, mm. and that's the danger for me because I end up being there till seven o'clock at night thinking about it and talking to people. And um, that's the danger. And I've got to reel myself in a bit and, you know, make sure I get home on time. But, but when, will, when will you, Neil Fisher, sit down at home and think, now I'm where I want to be. I've got what I want. That's 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 a sixty-four thousand dollar question, isn't it? I do. If it's if you're the type of person that started your own business and uh, has a bit of an entrepreneurial flair, I th I don't think you ever do, Blair. I, d I, d I think you've always got that that hunger in you and that that drive that pushes you forward, and you and you enjoy it. You love doing it, which is a which is a big part of it. I think if that part was taken away from you, you'd feel quite quite empty. Well, good luck with that. It's good yeah. to see you, <laughs> and thank you for coming in. Thanks, Blair. Very good to see you, Neil. Great. Neil Fisher.